A quick comment on battery and fuel cell modeling. It's not something that there's a huge amount going on in, in Australia and New Zealand, but for those of you who are interested, I think it's important to let you know that, that this technology is being developed um, and it's a big part of the ANSYS profile uh, portfolio here. So physics-based aging models to predict uh, capacity, battery capacity. Um, Okay, so there's a lot of empirical models that have been around and are in the code, but now they're starting to do them based on uh, chemistry. So you can uh, include lots of more of the chemistry and, and particularly that chemistry that results to aging of the cell. Um, when you come to use these models, they are not much use um, outside of of fluent if you've got to run fluent at the same time. Um, so when you want to start integrating these models into a more system model, then you can't run fluent transient. It might take days to run. You need a ROM, so a reduced order model. And there's much better training tools than that now for building these ROMs. So significant um, development has gone into that. And you can see that the ROM is picking up essentially the same behavior as the full CFD. So it's it's been well trained there. Uh, there's now a battery pack builder. So it's okay to have one cell, but that's not how batteries are. They have all sorts of layering of packs and supports, etc. So you can now um, have various bits of the geometry set up and models and then pack them together to form a battery. So, um, and then you can start seeing um, what's going on in different modules, etc. Just one slide on fuel cells. There's a whole one hour talk on this. Um, but what I wanted to, to point out are just like three areas. So one is always the meshing um, is difficult for fuel cells. And here we're showing that you can actually start using the um, watertight methodology to deal with the non-sweepable parts and then um, bring in sweepable meshes. We can also do extrudes now in watertight meshing. So you could actually mesh this and extrude those off. Um, so when they're flat sheets just extruded off, this can all be done now in the watertight meshing. Um, there's lots of physics going on in these. It's not only gas phase reactions and gas phases on surface, but you've now got all the water in there. What happens to water vapor, uh, water that forms into droplets? And so there's a whole new um, set of models and what happens to the water that essentially can pass through the membranes there. And so you've got new equations and models for that. And then finally, I think a key thing, is there's always a lot of validation going on. So you can see here some, some good validation um, for a voltage current uh, curve. Um, let's, um, let's jump on to thermal modeling. So there's, a, there's nothing particularly new here, just a lot of um, useful improvements. So if you need to, you can bring the um, representation of a PCB board into Fluent. So the idea here is, you know, when you've got all the copper layout on the board and that, and you want to, you want to bring in essentially the thermal conductivity tensor uh, there because you've got um, high and low values because of the uh, relative composition in each volume or, or each surface of the amount of copper you can import that configuration. Um, you can now have um, transparent inlets and outlets when you're using either Monte Carlo or discrete ordinate. So you can have like a, a door that's open and radiation coming in through it. So you've got this type called transparent now that you can use to um, bring radiation in or let radiation go out. 
you can have shell conduction with non-conformal mesh interfaces. So that is something which has not been possible before. So um, you can uh, start having um, layers of stuff where you're going to build up shell conduction, um, even when you haven't got conformal interfaces. <laughs>